President Biden predicting the border will be, quote, chaotic for a while. Peter Ducey is live at the White House with more. Peter, yesterday Mayorkas said everything was fine, but the president does predict chaos. Dana, chaotic is not a word that you ever hear a commander in chief use to describe one of their own policies. But President Biden is basically saying that's just the way it is. Well, we've had chaos at the border for a number of years. The governor has already said that he wants to see as many as 15,000 or 150,000 troops at the border. So are you thinking about setting more than 1,500? No, look. What we want to do at the border is have it work and function the way it's designed to work. And that requires us having more immigration officers, more asylum judges. But there is already such a backlog that some border crossers will be released with no way for the feds to track them. DHS is explaining it like this to us. U.S. Border Patrol sectors may consider releasing certain migrants who have undergone strict national security and public safety vetting to continue their immigration processes. This may include a processing, uh, processing migrants for parole to reduce the amount of time they spend in custody. The House leaders on the Republican side pushing a border bill today are warning against that kind of catching and releasing. It's insane. We're catching people from Yemen. You got to understand, these aren't people just coming from Mexico. They're coming from 160 countries, from from Yemen, from China, from others. I mean, why are they coming to America? Why are on the terrorist watch list? We know what has happened in this country. We've got to protect our country. They are going to have Secretary Mayorkas join Karine Jean-Pierre at the White House briefing today. But as for President Biden's on-camera activities as Title 42 expires, his one on-camera appearance will be to tout historic conservation actions. Dana. Peter Ducey at the White House, thank you so much. Brandon Judge, President of the National Border Patrol Council, Lieutenant Chris Oliveira, is the, uh, with the Texas Department of Public Safety. And gentlemen, uh, welcome to both of you. There, there's so much to go through. I just want to give... If we can, in a simple way to help our viewers understand what's happening as of tonight. Under Title 42, an agent can process and send 40 migrants back to Mexico in five minutes, all right? That's what we understand. When F Title 42 goes away, it's going to take one agent 30 minutes to an hour to process one migrant and determine where he will, she will go next. Now, we're told this Title VIII goes into effect next, meaning if you don't apply first in Mexico, you can be expelled immediately. So I, I don't know if that's going to be enforced, but we'll find out from you in a moment here. What the president just said when he was up in White Plains, New York, yeah, he believes, based on that soundbite, the problem is resources, Brandon Judd, uh, and there's not enough on the border to handle everybody, and that, that, that's quite evidence. What, what, what's going to happen no, now? No, it's, it's just more lies from... Yeah, it's, it's just more lies from this administration. It's more deflections. It's not a problem of resources. It's a problem of policy. If we had the proper policy, we can control the border tomorrow. We've already proven that. We don't need to throw more money at this. We don't have to have the taxpayers shoulder the burden. What we have to have is we have to pr have proper enforcement stances. If we have that, we can stop this tomorrow. He just won't give that to us because he knows it goes against his base. So what we've got to go back to is we've got to go back to the rule of law. We've got to go back to what makes us safe, what makes the American people safe. And that's what's so disgusting to every single one of us that are trying to protect the, the American people. It's policy, not more resources. Lieutenant Olivares, could you explain to people what it will, what could be actually different? Because the, we've been covering this story every day. And I, I want you to be able to tell people, if you've been following us on Fox News as we've covered this story, what might it look like? What's going to be different for the people of the Texas Department of Public Safety tomorrow morning? Well, well, Dana, we're heavily more involved now than we've ever been in terms of border security. But if we look at the past two years and why we're here today and why we're talking about this particular topic, well, it's because the administration has simply dismantled every policy that was put in place. The, they, they canceled the construction of the border wall. They took away every viable tool from U.S. Border Patrol to do their job on the front lines and to enforce criminal work. And that's why we're seeing this mad surge of mass migration between the ports of entry. So yesterday, we started taking a proactive approach. Governor Abbott made it very clear from day one, back in March of 2021, we launched Operation Lone Star, that we were going to take a stance. We weren't going to wait for the administration to take responsibility for their actions. We were going to step in and do the job. That's what we've been doing for the past two years. Yesterday, we cleared out 
brush along the river and we put concertina wire, razor wire along with National Guard to try to stem that flow of people coming across between the ports of entry. Now they talk about humanity, they talk about compassion, more orderly process. There's nothing humane or compassionate about people crossing between the ports of entry with their children on a dangerous river. Also, when they make it to the United States, they have nowhere to go. The shelters are at capacity, and now they're sleeping in the streets. So clearly they have not done anything to protect these migrants that are coming across the border, and we will continue taking more action and address any threats that we see along the border. And also, we have to keep in mind, too, we have to focus on the criminal activity that's also going to be taking place because of Title 42. You're going to see an increase in human smuggling, drug smuggling, also gotaways, because every single resource, federal resource, is now going to be pulled from the front lines, and they're mm -hmm. going to have to process. So now we're going to have to step yep. in and try to fill that void. So uh, the concertina wire is just one spot, uh, one location along a border that extends hundreds and hundreds of miles. Brandon Judd, you, you asked the question, um, what should the policy be? All right, well, we've got to do one of two things. We either have to hold them in custody pending a deportation proceeding, or we have to send them back to Mexico and, and let them wait there until they have their, their day in court. All of these individuals that cross the border illegally, they have the right to petition for their day in court, but they don't have the right to be released into the United States. And that's the magnet that's drawing all these people. It's a reward. Every single time they violate the law and they get released into the United States, we're rewarding them for their unlawful acts. And that's what we've got to take away. That's what the consequence has to be. The consequence has to be to either wait in custody until you have your day in court or wait in another country until your day in court. And by the way, that's what all developed countries around the world do. They do not allow people to enter their countries illegally and be released. They make them wait in another country pending their asylum claim in that country. And that's what we need to do as well. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for kicking us off this morning as we get ready to... You got your work cut out for you, man. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate you guys. it. Thank you so much. I was thinking as they were speaking mm -hmm. about the word chaos. Yeah. So remember the Afghan withdrawal? Yes. And we described that as chaos. Mm -hmm. The people on the ground described it as chaos. Even the administration itself described it as chaos. A month ago, the National Security Council spokesperson at the White House said they didn't say any chaos mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. Here, even the president of the United States is admitting chaos, mm -hmm. and yet they don't seem to want to own it. I was, um, when we were listening to Secretary Mayorkas there, the, the thought comes to mind, why isn't the President of the United States delivering the same message that he was with the level of force and conviction that he did? And my only conclusion as of now is that the White House is going to have Mayorkas own this thing. We haven't seen Kamala Harris all week on this topic. Remember, it was root causes a year ago? Mm -hmm. That whole argument has gone to the wayside now, and they've pretty much given up on that. Mm -hmm. um, in El Paso, they, they think they could get 17, 18,000 a day. Right. I, I, you, you've seen it already. I mean, we've been showing the video for a month. Um, I, that's just one town. The Wall Street Journal editorial page said, Joe Biden's immigration calamity, the collapse of his border policy is on full and painful display. And we're going to take you through this all day today as this story un, uh, develops yeah. and rapidly. Mm -hmm. Saw the video and we'll have more of it. Yes. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.